Okay, I've got um, <coughs> five o'clock. Call this meeting to order. I'd like to ask uh, Paul Stratton to um, lead us in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, I come before you to ask you to give wisdom to the council meeting, give them direction that helps the community, protect them, guide them in the path that you choose for them. Lord, we give you honor and glory in all the things that are good. Let us not take things for granted, Lord. And we beseech your wisdom. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, first, first thing on the agenda, I have the minute, minutes of the previous meeting. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting? I'll make that motion. I'll second. I have a first and second. First Mary, second station. Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, Next, we have our city attorney. Um, Just on the actions, I'm just going to let Tara explain this a little bit on the multi-use trail as well. So if you want to just elaborate on that. So... So, the mayor, Lisa, and I went over to meet with uh, Judge Johnston and David Howell from Bell Engineering regarding the multi-use trail connecting the end of the trail on Oakwood there all the way out to the Hartman apartment. And originally, when we first applied for that grant, we applied through the uh, city of Hartford and uh, was approved. Part of that grant is an 80-20 grant which means 80% of the pay with grant funds and the city has to come up with a 20% match. And previously, Bo had gotten the court to um, confirm that they would help us with half of our 20% match. Well, since then, no big surprise, the original amount that we were going to have to put in has increased quite a bit, as is the nature of the cost of materials and everything. And we also discovered that the uh, value of our 20% has to be actual money, and it cannot be in kind. And, the, and with that said, that's what they was the judge at that the judge at the time thought it was could be in kind labor match. So, um, but so that's kind of changing the the landscape a little bit of the fiscal court's contribution. So um, that being said, we all met and we kind of looked at everything and. Uh, the engineers are going to go back and also look and see if there are other ways that we could maybe structure the project, if there's other avenues and other grants and other ways that we can help fund it. The judge does think that, um, you know, depending upon when, when the county's portion has to be paid out, if it can be spread out over the course of the project instead of all at once, right. that might be a lot more amenable in being able to get the county's contribution. It wasn't a negative meeting by any means. Um, and right now, all that the uh, all that we as a city are required to do is enter to an agreement for the engineering services, uh, which is something we would have to pay anyway, and it goes towards our total contribution. Yep. Um, and as I told Bo, I would recommend that the council probably go ahead with that process because and that just one, gets the steps. Out. Yeah, that just right. gets the steps rolling in right. the right direction. And it gets the engineers so. working on that portion of it. So that we can then move forward, and it also gives the fiscal court time to figure out uh, how they're going to help us and assist us in this. Okay, is this to finish the walkway across the parkway? Yes, all out the way out to the park. park. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was that grant that the governor came how in. How much with. money are we talking about the city having to put in? The total 20% match at the most recent updated amount that data gave us was going to be closer to about 100000 Yeah. Um, of course, we had hoped to get the fiscal court to pay half, and again, that's something that David feels that uh, it may not be completely out of the question, but obviously since the nature of their contribution is changing, it's something he has to take back to his court. Yeah. So that's something, um, and I don't have that dollar amount. I thought Lisa might have had that in our packet, um, but I think it was around 75 is that right? The original amount, I believe. No, for our engineer. For our engineer, yes. Yeah. Fees? Yes. Of which we pay that and then 80% of it is turned in to be reimbursed. Yeah, so it'll come back to us. Yeah. So, um, I guess we can discuss that in new business whenever we get down to new business. So that's an update on the, the multi-use trail. Um, we'll, we'll discuss it again here in a little bit. 
do we, uh, let's see. On our financial reports, I ask that everybody's probably had a chance to look at it, but if you need time, again, go ahead and look at it, and then I'll ask for a motion to accept the financial reports. I'll make the motion to accept. I have a second. Motion by Mary Bell, second by Tony. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like side, motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Um, now we're going down to old business and the second reading of Ordinance 2023 01. Um, could I get somebody to read that first portion of it there and then we'll open the floor for discussion. I'll read it. Thank you. Um, an ordinance establishing business license fees and penalties for the privilege of conducting trades, businesses, and professions in the corporate city limits of Hartford, Kentucky. Thank you. <clears throat> now, does anybody have any um, thing that they want to bring forward um, I, in discussion or a I, motion? I would like a discussion. Um, and I understand the logic behind this, and I reached out to Cheryl Lynn when she came to our meeting a couple of months ago, thanking her for coming and presenting, and I understand what she was saying um, and wanting city money to stay here and that kind of thing. And then we came up, um, got this ordinance presented to us, and I agree with some of it and disagree with some of it. I'd like some changes made before we, before I personally vote yes. Some things that I wanted to consider, and we're factoring this in, that a lot of times when food trucks come to the city of Hartford, they're here for a nonprofit reason. Um, when the ones in front of the library, um, you know, that's going to fund the library. Uh, I know sometimes the soccer team sets it up, the cheerleaders set it up, and all those, there's lots of factors that go into that that, are not just us. When those decisions for fundraising are made, those are site-based decision councils through schools, and all that has to be approved through the board. So before we voted today, I just didn't need know if we needed more of a research, investigation, you know, how much are we hurting our nonprofits if we put our stiffer, stiffer penalties on food trucks. Um, those are just some of my random thoughts. I'll uh... I will say I did speak with Melanie at the library mm -hmm. fact, because they have had quite a few food trucks. A lot of those are not fundraisers for the library. They just invited to set up there. So it's not, none of the funds, any money coming off that is actually for okay. the library. Do you know anything specific about like the organizations, school organizations, and like the cheerleaders will bring in the pretzel truck and? I, I don't. I do know that a lot of times you see the NTNs. Sometimes it is for that, and other times it's just them setting up here. So unless it's the specific specifically says it's for a fundraiser, a lot of times they're just coming here to set up. Do they ask permission for coming in the city or are they just... Well, they have to have a fee. They have to have a business license. license yeah. But in this particular stage, it would have to be um, according to the new mobile food unit subcategory. And what's the biggest difference between what they're doing now? And if they're in the city for twice or less a month instead of buying just a one-year general license fee, twice or less a month is a $50 a month. And then if they're here for more than twice a month, it's $100 each month. And the idea is that... To could discourage them. Huh? Well, it's also it was discussed at that meeting is that, you know, they're coming in, they're not really paying anything on occupational, they're not paying anything on using the city infrastructure. And so this was a way of kind of helping the city recoup some of its expenses. So, um, briefly, uh, how is this... This change different from what we've been doing. So what what's going to change? So originally, if you came into the city for mm -hmm. doing any business whatsoever, no matter how often you're here or anything, especially in that particular type of nature where it's very it's mobile, you just pay a seventy five dollar general business license for the year, okay. and that's it. And that's the only expense. That that's the only money the city ever sees out of that business. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is some. This is a way for the city to actually 
Because, and like as the argument that was coming up was that you know, your local businesses, your brick and mortar stores, they're paying inventory tax, they're paying occupational tax, they're paying property taxes, and uh, they're paying their business license on top of that. And that was kind of one of the ways to help kind of offset and make feel like our local businesses are being, uh, being at least on even footing at that point. Tara, I might, I might say that I think I talked to um, I can't, Everly, Miss Everly, who we call. Um, I think maybe maybe you have said it as well, but the library and this the library has agreed to say they they wouldn't bring them no more than twice a month or something of that sort. I know I've seen them there I, before. I talked to Melanie, and, and my understanding is they weren't going to have them like come maybe more than like one specific one more than like once a month. Right. I do know. I think Shogun has been there at least twice this month. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will say that, um, and this is just my personal. Uh, I think it's it, it's important that we do protect our restaurants and our uh, right. business owners here in this city. Um, I, I think this could be something, but in in the personal opinion, I don't know the right from wrong of doing. How stiff do we need to take this? Do we stiffen it up? Do we, can we can we break it down? I, I don't know, and that's why I'm I'm asking for the council's decision on this. Well, I'm, I think I'd it's, like to say a few things too. Okay. I, I understand what the purpose is, but I, I mean, do we have an accounting of how many fees we've gotten to allow people to do this? <coughs> Come into the city. Do we keep that in? An Heather would be one that could answer that more for us, um, as far as like the business license and stuff. Yeah. Um, our food trucks. How many do you ha think we have right now on file? The common And they're pretty well current. Well, my feeling is that I read this and it was like we want to discourage anybody from coming into Hartford to do anything. We want to try to keep them out. Now I'm old enough to be most of y'all's grandparent, but anyway, um, I can remember a few years ago in this city when I was a child and my father was the one who taught me how to Raise cane with people. He raised cane about this. They tried to, tried and successfully landlocked this county, this city. If you all will notice, we can go nowhere because there are certain prominent individuals who own the property all the way around Harvard. And I, I really. You know, that's always bothered me because we in Hartford can never lure any type of businesses in here because there's no place for them to go. There's no land. If there are lots available, they're not big enough for a business that will employ several people. And I really hate to see us discourage anyone from coming in and giving something to our citizens that they may not be able to get otherwise. And that's different kind of foods, regardless of what they are. I mean, I don't like them all. I like some of them. But, and, you know, I don't want to hurt the businesses and their lunch hurt. But I'll tell you what, every once in a while, it'd be nice to be able to go somewhere and sit down at six o'clock and have a nice supper. We can't even do that in Hartford. And I, I find it real difficult to try to make it more difficult on some of these food trucks to come in and have some business. I, I really do. I, I just, well, Terry, you know how I am. Of course, I've marked all over this thing. <laughs> And I've got some really serious concerns when you get to talking about ownership and all that stuff and corporate levels. 
because I think that that goes into a whole nother realm of something that this city doesn't want to get into. What are you talking about? Oh, when you're talking about, um, well, I'd have to find it. We'll say 95% of this is um, what you already have. <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> really didn't. I do a lot. It made me spread it out. It made me spread out. I don't know exactly where that is, but anyway, I mean, it's it's just like in the definitions. You're you're very specific on some of your definitions, but you use the word entity, but you don't define that. Well. In a previous life of mine, I was in charge of the program that determined whether people got coal mining permits in the state on the ownership and control. And that meant that we had access to every database to find out who the corporations were and how much they had and all that sort of Because when you get to talking about a corporation and its officers, and holding people responsible, you really can't hold the officers, but if they own 10% of the corporation, you can't. So, I mean, there's a lot of things in that. But I, I just really, it, it just sort of hurt me to think that we don't want to seem to want different business. But at the same time, I, I, at, at the same time, we need to protect what we do have as well, too. Uh, I mean that is important. That's very true. So it, we got to protect what we do have established. Um, I could see an argument on both sides of this thing, but um, so. Is it a frequent loss to the existing businesses? I mean, I don't know. Well, any I, numbers for or... for instance, for instance, well, Foodie Call and uh, Soreheads, um, they do a lot of out catering. You know, they'll come and get in. Mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll have their meals ready. Um, when you have something set up at the library, that does draw one. Basically, sometimes out, out of the day's time, it's people that's working in, in these offices that are going to these things, mm -hmm. whether it be foodie call, sore heads, or the, the food truck that's over here. So, yes, it, it, it does kind of circulate around. And I've, I've talked to Annie about it, and, um, and I've, heard, I've heard their concerns. Um, so... Is it would it be the same role of supply? And I'm just and again the out the the other people that are involved like organizations and sports and and I'm thinking specifically like the foster care so, uh, association sets up at Bob's sometimes with a little food truck. Are we looking at that too? I mean, are we cutting uh, into the profit of nonprofits? That would be my concern. Well, I think it, I think if that's and, and Tara can correct me if I'm wrong, but that. If there's certain terms that you all want to correct in this, we can we that's can right. we, can, yeah. we can revamp that's it, kind of what I'm and then asking. and then we can go back from there. So I, I mean, well, if, if, you want if it needs to be tweaked, questions about things, I'm in here. The loading and unloading of goods. Do we now charge every FedEx truck that comes in here and unloads packages? Do we get and of all people, I shouldn't be asking this, but I know for a fact that Soreheads accepts food goods from outside this county, outside this city limits in the county. Now, is he going to have to go get a license to do that? Well, I, and that is what is I think that that's one of the services here. And it's a little bit of an elevated fee than the general business because they don't pay off payroll tax. What? They do have a business license to come in, do drop off and pick up, and it's a little bit more because they don't pay off payroll tax than the general business. I still didn't hear you. I'm, yeah, I'm hard hearing. I'm old <laughs> and I'm hard hearing. <laughs> they obtain a business license. They do have one. Yeah, what you saying? They do? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
But as she was saying about when run businesses out, I would love to see a policy incorporated that. How, how would you know whether they have a license or not? <laughs> we hope they do. We do um, have the businesses tell us who their leaders are so we can have them get a business license. Hopefully. You haven't been around as long as I have, huh? <laughs> um, what would you say? It would be nice to see the policy we incorporate convince businesses to bring brick and mortar here versus just running them out. But like she said, I mean, maybe there's not a whole lot of options for that, but it would be nice to see that for our city, I think. So I guess, thank you, Heather. Thank you. Um, Can we table it with well, just some what changes, just some minor, to me, minor changes to maybe, right. you know, I don't want to go into profits of nonprofits. That's my concern. Right. Yes. So I, I have a couple of comments, if I may. Uh, so... I know the, the big topic is the food truck industry coming in. Uh, is, is there, could we have a, a yearly or an annual fee option? I mean, that's, that's, why, that's what I'm saying. If we need to reword anything, uh, I'm sure Terry will write anything that we set up to design for. Hold on just a minute. Okay, and then my second comment it's kind of about the nonprofit as well. Uh, at least if, if somebody's going to do a nonprofit, could we could we have it in our ordinance where they at least come in and like apply for permission and let us know that on this day that Ohio County cheerleaders are doing a nonprofit with some whatever. I'm not. A if I can comment on, I, I am gonna. One of the reasons that you see so many food trucks in Hartford, even for your fundraisers and everything, is because here they don't have to pay that 3% tax. Do what? They don't have to pay that restaurant tax. As, as they so, would in in. So that's, in another thing that you're, that's another thing that already, you know, Hartford is missing out on. Yeah. I would, I tell you what, I really would like to see an economic impact statement done on this entire area before I could even begin to vote yes on this. I mean, you're going to talk about several thousands of dollars for that versus a hundred dollar business license. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I don't understand. I mean, I know that Sherilyn and Foodie Call has, they have lunches and everybody knows it and people go down there. Does, has it impacted their revenues that much? Uh, well, I mean, I know that that's not what they've come in and... Yeah, and she uh, she came in and, yeah, it has impacted them. How much? I don't know the number, but uh, that's why they came to See, us. That's, so. that's, well, I, Paul's got something real quick. Can we can we raise the, the standard more than $100? I mean, for the food trucks to come in and then put them in a separate area. Because right now, out here at the library, I was up there the other day, and this 18 wheel almost hit this little boy. I was there when uh, Shogun was up there. And I think we'll have a, sec uh, a special area that they can, you mm -hmm. know, set up. Cross, set up at. Yeah. And, and if we have to raise, the, I mean, we can take this off and wait on it, but get more money. Hey, if it's so I, not business, then they ought to be able to come in here. So here's what I'm going to suggest if you all are okay with it, and then I'm going to get to you, Paul. Um, let's, if you all are in favor of tabling this, and I want you all, all to reach out to Tara of concerns or something that you all would like, and we can talk about it as a group. Um, if this is something that we table to the next meeting, I'm fine with that. Uh, I ask you all to, if you've got any notes that you all have, uh, just bring them out to light and see where we can go from there, if everybody's good with that. I don't mind that. Okay. So, uh, I have a quick question. Does the school board communicate with the city? Because those fundraisers are usually approved by site-based council months ahead of time. That'd be a heather question. Well, also, don't we have something in the new policy about events with food trucks? We, yeah. Um, so, we kind of take that 
And, and I think that with yeah. I was going to say, if you're looking to carve out something specific like that, I was going to recommend that we we kind of enhance that area where you can apply to the city and the city can make a waiver for like a special event or okay. something of that nature. Okay. okay. I would hate to see that too. Yeah. yeah, and that well, I was trying to encompass everybody, and I want downtown to have their business. I don't want to hurt anybody's revenue, but then I got to thinking. The cheerleaders get those food trucks. Soccer team gets those food trucks. We're cut. Yeah, we're cutting in the, their profits a little bit. So I thought it needed a little bit more clarification. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> I listened to Mary, and she's brought up some really strong points. And Stacy, you have too. Thank you. A um, couple of things I wanted to say was actually a touch on by Ms. Terry and Mr. Jeff. Um, we have two opposing ideas, but what if we can meld them together in a sense? Um, I don't know when the two restaurants here are open, but if the uh, food restaurants, was, uh, the mobile restaurants want to come here on the evening, if they're, if they're closed, maybe that's something we can look yeah. at that's differently. Uh, when a mobile unit comes down here and they have to pay uh, fifty dollars, they're not guaranteed to make that money back because if right. they're making fifty percent, uh, hundred percent profit, then they're looking at having to make a hundred dollars in sales. So that might be uh, discouraging them from coming out here because they know they want to have to at least make this much, but. If we come out here, if they come out here and it's kind of an honor system, whereas whatever the gross sales are, then they have to pay the city one, two, three, four percent right. of that. So therefore, they don't have to guarantee a certain minimum to pay for the taxes. If they have a bad day and no sales here because it's raining or whatever, then they're not out any money. But if they have a good day, then the city will get based on the sales of that day. Right. Sounds like a good idea to me. Well, that's going to be a, a much more difficult mm -hmm. way. I mean, you're talking about <clears throat> poor Heather. <laughs> I hope you're ready to give her a raise. Well, and that's one of the things, too, that that's something that I'm going to say as well. You know, we... We can't all police it how we want to. Right. Um, sure, we're going to try to stay on top of it, but that's one of the things. If if I don't see it over there, didn't drive that area, we wouldn't know. Um, but I get what you're saying, so thank you. Uh, it's not a bad. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. In, in in application, it's going to be right. very difficult. So. I understand. Plus, it's, it'd be an honor system situation. Right. The other side, we can also implement them the same taxes that the restaurants here would actually have to pay. Right. Yeah. But not have to hit them fifty dollars each time. They had to do the regular seventy-five dollars as a normal business, but has to pay the extra taxes that any other restaurant here would actually have. To pay. Right. So we're trying to meld them together, and as for a nonprofit. If they are guaranteed to come here as a nonprofit, then they have to guarantee X amount of to that nonprofit. Right. I see what you're saying. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we do table this. Okay. Here's what I'm going to suggest on that motion. Um, if we have to, um, I'll, 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 our request is that you all reach out to me or Tara of something that you might want to see, and and we can just put our notes together, and, and if we have to have a special call meeting on later on, then let's do it. I think it's important to protect our um, businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that we accommodate everybody that's coming into town. So thank you, guys. I have a motion to table this I'll for second. the next meeting. Stacia seconds. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like side. Motion carries. Thank you all. Um, we've already talked about the multi-use trail. I don't have that total in front of me, so I don't want to give that one just yet, right, Tara? Um, yeah, that engineering services contract. Yeah. Uh, is it not? Is it in this file folder here at all? I've got this and the packet and the sign sheet. I'll tell you what. 
just if how important it is, we might have to have a special call meeting on that. Um, Lisa's out of town. Um, so that amount will be the 75000 and that will be how much percentage of that? If 80% is, is recoupable under the grant, but I don't believe it was 75 right now. I think the... I think the current, it was going to be invoiced as a... In, in okay, okay, all right. So we'll get that amount once Lisa gets back, and um, we'll, we'll take actions on that. Um, let's see. So that's a, on all the old business. New business, I have a... Um, basically, this is an interlocal agreement from the... Um, from the counties and cities, basically, this we we've, we've helped each other out in along the way here and there. Borrowed equipment from the county, uh, Beaver Dams helped us. So this is just a contract saying, hey, if something goes wrong, um, not saying that it will, but that way, if they see a city garbage truck over there in Beaver Dam, they're gonna say, well, what's it doing over there? Well, it's just an interlocal agreement. Beaver Dam done it last Monday, yeah. We were down doing the same thing last Monday, so it's just something for the counties to cities to work together. This is all McHenry, Centertown, Fordsville, and county. So, and that goes with the county water and all of them. So it's just a it's just to help each other out type deal. And I, I ask for a motion to be able to sign this interlocal agreement. I make the motion to sign it. I second. I have a motion by Jeff, second by Mary Bell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose like size. Motion carries. All right. Thank you all. Um, the second thing is the water policy. Uh, Rachel, do you want to update that? or I, I'm not up front on that one. You want me to kind of yeah. summarize what we're doing? <laughs> okay. So Rachel reached out to me to make some uh, updates to our current water collection, utility collection policy that we've adopted here with the city. She has some very good recommendations that I think would be something that we want to accept. Um, I met with her today to get some clarification on issues, oh, and we called Beaver Dam City together because specifically, right now, what we're doing is if uh, if you have a water bill that's issued, hundred dollar water bill that you owe, and it, the bills go out the last week of the month, and you pay that first week of the new month, but your but your check comes back and it bounces. So you're already past the disconnect date, so that you weren't on the disconnect list, but now your check is bounced. So now all of a sudden you owe your water bill plus you owe the um, plus you owe the uh, return check fee of dollars, and you're on the disconnect list. And right now we're giving them until the next 25th. So at that point they owe two bills before they go on a disconnect. And uh, Rachel is doing a courtesy call, but we're it's kind of putting us in a problem with some of our receivables because now we're carrying this forward almost 60 days. And so what the recommendation, one of the things that we're doing, that we call Beaver Dam to find out how they do it. Beaver Dam immediately calls the person and says, hey, you got to bring cash up here today before the end of the day, or we, or we cut off your water. And we talked about maybe doing like a three-day kind of a courtesy call and say, hey, check, you need to come pick this up, pay it, not another check, you know, credit card or cash or money order or something of that nature, or then you go on the you know, get disconnected. That way we can go ahead and get our money without having to carry forward a whole other extra month of services that were out, potentially. Um, and uh, so that was one thing that we had talked about maybe implementing. There's a few other changes that she had asked that we look at, and some of those are things that I think actually we're going to have to amend our ordinance on because our ordinance specifically states, such as like the tampering, um, so, you know, when they go on the tampering fee. And she's also, I asked her today, and you might have to update the council to call United, which is our system, because right now, uh, up to this point, she hasn't been able to show on the account on the water bill when you have these extra fees, like these penalties and everything. Right. And we were trying to figure out a way because she's just keeping a record of it. So if she's out one day, we hope somebody catches it. And so she, I had her call United, and I'm hoping that was helpful. They walked me through how to apply it to the bill that way it shows to the customer's balance the way they owe it. So if they were shut off and they don't come back in for two weeks, it's there on the account. So instead of having the shutoff list and having to go look through that, it's on the account already. So the total is there because like when the bills go out and shutoffs, they have the uh, balance forward, but the shutoff fee is not on the bill because it was never applied to the bill. So they walked me through how I can apply that to the bill so everything is on the bill. 
Okay. So this is a better way to kind of recoup it, especially like if she's out, someone comes in, if Heather makes the call, she actually can see it in the system, okay, this is how much is owed. She doesn't have to go to find some paper notes that, that Rachel has made. So um, with that in mind, uh, you know, and, and, and Rachel can give you her list of recommendations, some of those I think that we can go ahead and just implement to a policy that the council can approve. That's not a big deal, but I do think there's a few things that we will have to amend our ordinance. And if, if with the council's approval, I'd like to go ahead and get that drafted and get those changes in there because this is something to kind of help our bottom line so you're not carrying forward so many months worth of bad bills. Right. Um, one case, for example, I think was um, right now, if someone doesn't pay and they and they don't pay next month, they're still on an active water bill, so we're still accumulating, whereas she wants to make it after 60 days of non-payment, that account goes inactive. So we stop servicing, and so we stop having and eating so much in expenses, and we can have it automatically shut off, and they have to come and pay the new deposit. We can apply the deposit then to come back and restore services. They have to pay a new deposit at that point, and it just kind of helps us with our bottom line instead of getting that receivable balance so high, which is something that we've been trying to kind of cut down. And I will say that Rachel does a good job. Um, a lot of people don't think that there's a lot of shutoffs, but she does still try to call everybody, and I think that's important that we at least try that effort. Um, so good job of everything that you do. So, Thank you, Rachel. Um, I'm very humbled by that. So, um, so I guess um, we need to have something revised for the March um, Is meeting. Is all good with me updating that? Do you all have any objection? No. Discussion? No. 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 I, I do have a question. Okay. Uh, so let uh, a rental house that uh, has an outstanding water bill, and that person has left the, the accounts in their name, and then the homeowner rents it to someone else. That person can't get water because they have an outstanding bill. So how how can we address that? Where you beat me to it. Okay. <laughs> right. I'll have to bring that up. So, all right. uh, we had actually addressed this issue several years back. The city had contemplating filing an or uh, passing an ordinance making a landlord responsible for a tenant passing bill. It did not go over well. Uh, those of you who are not on the council, it, it always not go over well with, with, with your city. Uh, those of you who, uh, who were on the council then or present back then, be happy. Okay? <laughs> just saying. That's a it, that's a that's yeah. a different breed in itself. So, so. <laughs> it did not go. It did not get passed. Instead, we upped our uh, we upped our rental deposits significantly, and we adopted some new policy changes. And it did it, it, it did improve. Beaver Dam, you may have realized, has been in the news lately for the same reason. Um, and uh, they also had a very lively meeting the other night. Mr. Bratcher can <laughs> he was going to attend. I spoke to A.B. Conway this morning. Back when Hartford uh, first uh, talked about this. Justin Cowan was Beaver Dam City Attorney, and he and I had talked about the cities, at least Hartford and Beaver Dam, possibly reaching out towards Bull and, and Centertown as well, of entering into in a local agreement. To whereas if uh, a tenant skips out on the water bill in Beaver Dam and comes to try to rent a place, and that's something that we're trying to, you got it. We call Beaver Dam; they got to they got to settle up with them first before they can do that here. AB is uh, very on board with that and said that if Hartford's council is, we can, we can try and get that. And I think it. County Water is just making sure that they can legally do it. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Um, but far as it stands right now, as me personally, I don't, I, I don't want to attack it the way it has been in other cities right now. The, I the, think, prevailing, um, yeah, the, the prevailing method right now of making landlords responsible is not going over well. Um, I think the interlocal agreement would probably be a nice band-aid. And I think AV spoke highly of what he said. I was at that meeting. Yeah. Um, I think AV spoke highly and he said, you know, at the end of the day, it'd be hard to fight. Um, but it's one of those things I, I just see both sides of it. Me and him have been in discussion with it. Just to be clear, Kentucky law says landlords and tenants are equally responsible. Yes. So everything that the city is doing is in Beaver Dam or trying to do, they're, they're still working it out. It's trying to keep that from happening. Mm -hmm. right. And that's so, why they they um, they upped it to 250, 250 for a re, uh, not a reconnect deposit. deposit. And that way, that if that's not met on their water bill from the the renters, 
that that's that'll take it off the top. It's it's not a goal to set out for going after the landlords per right. se. That 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 deposit will be taken care of, and then they'll try to re, retract on it. So I see both sides of it. Well, um, that's. Enough. What we do is we get a lot of bouncers. Yep. They, they swap from one city to the next. Right. And they'll open a new account. They'll skip out on the bill. They'll go to, they'll go to Beaver Dam and they'll open an account there. And that's what this agreement is going to try and say. Is, hey, before you open this, hey, Beaver Dam, you got an open account on them? Perfect. Right. Okay, you need to go and to I think they're, and come back. I think they're going to try to set something up on a database where we can have access to it here in this office as well as yeah. the county water and city of Beaverdale. So, I mean, even Fordsville, because they are having the same issues. I talked to Mayor Fuquade up there. He's got the same scenario. So, um, I don't have a problem with that. I think it would be good. Make y'all's life a lot easier if we had something to play like that to call well, on. So, And I'll be completely candid. Rachel's been begging me for a few few months now, since right at Christmas, to get this stuff going. But that was actually one thing that I had been hoping to, to kind of get in the works. Yeah. Knowing that Beaver Dam had that coming up, yep. and uh, I was able to, to talk to AB today, so I'd like to tackle it all in one meeting at yeah. one time. So. Yeah, I mean, that's... Do you have any idea what our outstanding bill is, like uh, some of these rental properties or some of these, uh, like a dollar amount? Of well, I've got, like for people that are changing cities or people that have active accounts and haven't paid, and I'm going to shut them off because they don't have... Water because we've locked our meter. Yeah, do you, can you give us so an idea? So I've got two accounts that have been opened and active, but no water has been gone through um, since pretty much I started, and their bill is over a thousand dollars. Granted, they just accumulated the minimum bill for having the account active, and that would be adjusted off. So then I would apply their deposit, and then I would move forth with what they actually owe. And I think. They said, what was it on the year? About $6,000. Five or $6,000 is what they said. Over they there in Beaverdale. Wow. Now, the, the one thing that they were talking about with the renters was they had to, they were going to double down and make sure that lease agreements were filed with the city that had everybody that was living in it because if you just swap a name, you're not going to be on that list right. if someone that was with you. So they, they were going to do that. There's a lot of gray area in all of that right now, so... I'll catch some of you all up too, but, and back when we first talked about this, Mary Bell, you may have been on the council when that first came up, but uh, at that time, our outstanding on water bills was over $50,000, and what we ended up doing was changing a lot of our policy. What we were talking mm -hmm. about getting, we implement that, mm -hmm. so now you cannot come in if you're a tenant without bringing a copy of your lease agreement, right. listing all the tenants, and or having your landlord sign off on something showing who the tenants are so they can't just swap mm -hmm. names. You can't just call in and cancel an account unless you're on the account. We, we've we've implemented a lot of things, and the girls have done a fantastic job bringing that outstanding bill right. uh, balance way down. Uh, it's not quite the it's not quite the uh, number that it used to be, but there are still some instances where people sneak by, and I think this would help resolve that. So yeah, I think it I think it's a good idea to bring all this policies together. Um, so, if we can maybe see something within the next month or two, um, I think it would be good to get that passed. Um, as far as that goes right now, I, I, I want to see how things go in other areas for, before we make decisions like that. Um, I, I see both sides of it. I know the importance behind it. It's just like everything we do. If we want lights, we got to pay the bill. Um, I get that. Trust me, I get that. Okay. Um, Paul, do y'all have anything? We're going to go to visitors now. Do we need a motion on the to make? No, I just before I present a new ordinance to y'all, I'd like to make sure that you're on favor. Yeah, I, I'm favored with it. <laughs> And new business? Jeff and I need to talk about the land okay. of water. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let me get them go first, ahead. and then we'll go to the roundtable discussion. Okay. Do you have? Any, do y'all have anything to bring? Okay. Anybody else? Huh? I appreciate you letting me speak what I did. Thank you. are welcome. All right. Um, now we'll go down to council members' discussions. 
Um, Tara, do you have anything? I think I filled in. All right. Jeff, do you have anything? Uh, for discussion? I okay. Uh, Stacia and I, we, we talked about uh, with the grad about the uh, land water. Yep. Grad. I'll let y'all too. Uh, get in that one. <laughs> That's y'all's discussion. So. Yeah, so, so, so we had a so we had a video chat conference call with them uh, with uh, Jesse. Jesse. Jesse was part of it, and, and then, Jeannie. And then, and Jeannie, then Jeannie, but I don't which know. Is, and then Blake what? Ed. Trotrochi? Yeah. Trotrochi. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. And so yeah. So uh, so we talked about Ellis Park, the playground. Uh, what what we can, kind of what we can't do, and, and what what we had in mind to question them about. Uh, so I, I took some notes, and then she sent us some notes over it. Uh, some of the things, uh, there's like uh, five bullets that, uh, I guess what we needed to bring up before the, next, before the council meeting. Of course, we, we already know that the city owns Ellis Park, That's and it's... And it's if it's if we use a land grant, land water grant for that park, it has to stay a park, right? which I don't think it's going to change. It's been a park for a yeah. long time. Uh, it is a reimbursable grant, uh, and it varies from twenty five thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, minimum is twenty five, max is two fifty. Yep, and then, uh, but it's. Uh, it's not a dollar for dollar matching grant on our part. It it talk, we, like we talked earlier, it can be a uh, in work kind labor, yep. in kind labor equipment, equipment, itemized equipment, hours. Yeah, so workers. All, all of our if we volunteer times, if volunteers wanted to donate, right. that that all goes that counts towards our matching part of whatever dollar amount. So I guess um, do you um, do y'all have something in motion? play that you all would like to see to bring forward to the council as a whole for a grant to go after? Well, the um, this is due to the state by May 31st. Um, and she just said we really need a resolution to even move forward with it. It needs to be in writing. Um, the caveat to the in-kind labor and all that stuff we cannot start doing work on anything and retroactively try to charge for that. Right. So it could be that it's May or summer of 2024 that we're actually granted the grant. So yeah. that project could be on hold for... And maybe. that's... It, it, I, I can... I know about this because I deal with this in DLG. Um, I'm, I've got a land and water grant that I just got this year and it was two years to get it. Um... Those funds don't come easy. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor might have them sitting on his desk for about whatever time of frame, and he just might throw it out there like that, and the check will be... You won't get your check until it's purchased out of our funds, and then you'll get reimbursed. We do not have any... We have not come up with any specifics. We talked about playground equipment. They indicated good playground equipment. You're probably looking at $25,000. Um, that she said really the resolution, kind of get our ducks in a row, then decide what we want to start using that money for for the application, right? right. What to specifically put in the application. And I, I think a lot of that can be an in-kind labor match. Um, if we don't have the resources, we've got the equipment, the road, county road department, that's what that interlocal agreement thing was. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so with that being said, can we we don't have a resolution to pass right now so can we get something up for the next meeting because this is going to be on us pretty quick yeah the deadline like she said is may 31st she, they did thank us for trying to start a little earlier she said most most cities wait till the last minute well and that's something that i think is important because mm -hmm. you know our chances are getting one of these grants are pretty good because the city of hartford hasn't applied for one of these grants in a while as far as land and water goes i believe i might be wrong but uh i think it's a good chance of getting a grant like this and how if we far, don't we can regroup how far and how much do you think you can accomplish with that amount of money as far as the twenty-five thousand? no the whole grant 
25 is matching, isn't it? 25 is minimum. That's the minimum. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but yeah. even with the 200,000. Well, it's just matching your numbers up in your labor, uh, your material. I mean, uh, even your mileage, your fuel, all that adds up. Uh, yeah, I, I know the land. You want to know what you can get I, done. I want to know what you can get done for $200,000. Quite a bit. So we haven't went forward and started looking at the cost of playground equipment or, you know, what what do we want to put in there. We, ha we haven't done any of that yet. Well, so I guess do we need a motion for us to proceed with application yeah. or... Uh, Investigation application of this grant. Well, if they need a resolution, it'll have to. We'll have to have it written out and vote on the resolution. Um, but as far as going after it, I don't see that being well, that, a problem. Well, well, okay, that's for the grant application. The resolutions for the grant application. Yeah. So, do we need a motion today to move forward with even the research? Well, no. Going toward the application. No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, but Mary Bell, here's what I'm going to say. You know, we've discussed this. We've had this five-year plan for almost 15 years. <laughs> I know. This so is near and dear to my heart. Here's what I'm trying to say. A step in the right direction, I don't care if it's a small playground equipment. That's a step more than we've done in the past. If it's something small, we can grow from that, and we can, we can put into it how we need to at a time. Because this just sitting here and talking about it ain't going nowhere anymore. So I, I, I think it's important that we discuss this on a playground or whatever decision we make. Um, I just think it's big. Uh, I'm, I'm tired of talking about the five-year plan. So um, if everybody's in agreement to go on and go forward with this grant, uh, I'm okay with it. That five-year plan passed 15 years ago. Huh? That five-year plan <laughs> years ago. Yeah. yeah, so thank you, Jeff and Stacia, for um, reaching out to them at GRAD. That's what they are there for. And uh, if anybody has any other grants that you all see, there's a list a mile long that you can go after. Don't ever hesitate to call them. Yeah, and, and they're experts in there. And we don't have to write it ourselves. Right. Right. Just have to, we just have to take them the minutes of our meeting, our... our agreement saying yes we want to move forward uh, with the application process that that's I think is our next step is, is uh, having them meeting with them and doing that and you know uh, you don't have to go as small as 25,000 you, <laughs> you can go up there to the park right now and see what $25,000 buy because um, that's what we purchased that was our last purchase and so it, it it's very small playground equipment's expensive mm -hmm. But shoot for the stars and see where you can go from there. I mean, so w when doing this application, like it has so many checks of different things you can implement. And you could do we need as a council though to make those decisions? Well, I think how do we can get a food truck in and make that? <laughs> and we can do a nonprofit fundraiser. <laughs> I think on the application circle. process that'll have to come from Lisa. Yeah, she She'll said that they to, would have to work with so, somebody. So yeah. Lisa will have to fill out the application. Right. And then um, we can, she'll have to go through there and we and do the checklist. Generally, you'll meet with the grad rep who will kind of say, okay, you need to put this, this, this. Yeah, this is yeah. What you want to do. So right. that's something once she gets back, I will give her this and um, we'll go from there. I'll send it to you in an email. I've written all over this one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, David... Are you? I'm sorry. Are no. you done? Is that all you had with that? That's all I had. With that. Yeah, me too. That's all okay. I had. Thank you all for working on that. That's important. I, I like to see the more involvement of the council. So thank you all for doing that. Uh, David, do you have anything? Okay. Stacia, do you have anything I to follow up on? Do want to bring something up, and I don't know if this is the right venue. Um, something I just saw today: the old car wash in mm -hmm. Hartford has about four or five garbage trucks lined up in front of it. And their big semi bin now has uh, trash hoppers about three deep chicken wired in. Now this is our hub of our city. Yep. I don't know what's going on. I would think that there is a public health issue if you've got four or five trash trucks parked in the middle of town. Now I don't know what's going on. I don't know if Stephen Edge still owns it. He does. But um, if we can inquire. 
There's, uh, and that's what we was talking about down there a while ago. I will reach out to Stephen and see what's going on. Has anybody been? Has anybody come in to pay for anything in town? Oh, they're just growing. I think that's why I noticed now. Because I noticed that like two days ago too. But I think it's always been there, we just didn't really notice it. Until well, I think the bigger. I think the the business was down towards uh, on on Union Street, down towards Riverbend Apartments at a, a residence. Because I remember seeing totes and trash totes and stuff. Seeing so they have came in and paid a business license or anything? I um, think they just grown out of their. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I will talk to him, and I agree, I'm in agreement. Um, so I will talk to them, and I'll send um, I'll send uh, Chief Lindsay over there too to see if he can reach somebody over there because I I drive by it every day. I pull out of that subdivision. Shut so it's been shut off for the water shut six months. So they can't even wash their trucks do that. down. Okay. I like the now step. We had an interview with two off two uh, cadets for the city of Hartford, and it'd be the first time them going to Academy. <laughs> so we had interviews today with them, and it looks pretty good. And good. We're leaving it up to the chief to do the hiring and everything, but we want you to know that we. We're going to do a three-year contract with them, too. Because a lot of times they get in academy and they jump up and go to other agencies. So we want somebody who's going to stay in Hartford. And we want them to be a people person and, you know, treat the people. Because I think Hartford's growing and we all need to know our officers. And they go around and, you know, show themselves. And we got a good uh, thing going with the officers now and the chief of police. They are doing a great work here in Hartford. I see them out. I'm out too, all hours of night. And I see a lot of things going on, and they own it. <laughs> yeah, so, they're doing a pretty good job. Good job. That's all I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mary Bell, do you have anything to bring for discussion? <laughs> Take too long. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is just a. All right, thank you all. This is just something of discussion, and it's. I'm good either way. Um, and Tara might be able to elaborate on it a little bit. Right now, the mayor, the mayor can, um, without council approval, I think it's twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, that there was something along the way that happened, and they amended it to the 2500. And my my thinking is, can't hardly get nothing done in that 2500 dollars. And I'm asking if we could possibly raise that up to whatever amount you all think would be reasonable. And if it's too extreme, then I'll call everybody, anyways, to let them know what it is. Basically, I missed the first part. So this is just like executive order. Yes. Pay more, buy, yes. Buy more than twenty five thousand dollars. No, twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred okay. is what I, I'm eligible to purchase on purchase without oh, okay. council approval. Okay. So, and this is just a scenario for emergency purposes. This is nothing under the sun that I want to do. If it's something that's important, I will call everybody and let them know what's going on. So if y'all put it. Huh? <laughs> just <got> <laughs> I, I was just that's, thinking he was a good county, county. <laughs> So it would require the, there's a there's an existing municipal order that puts that out there, so it would require change. So and it's better. only twenty five hundred. Yeah. So would five thousand? I'm 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 fair for whatever you all are good with. I just I thought it was something that. What about five grand? I'm good with Work. that. I mean, we, we the municipal order has. How do we need to do that, Tara? We we'll just, we'll just add a new one. Okay. Do we need you looking at? <laughs> yeah. Y'all see a new do vote. Do we need a motion to? Well, well, I'll have to get you a new draft that y'all have to okay. approve it. Right. No. Okay. All right. And like I said, if it's anything of importance, I will let her, even no matter what it is. I just feel like there's there's a lot of things that can happen in the water world. Uh, I mean, exactly. I like mean, boat, well, yeah. <laughs> just make it big enough so, for all of us. 
that's just something, right? <laughs> that's just something that I I thought about going into this. So, so I, I think yeah, I'm I'm fine with raising it to five thousand dollars, but I want to say five thousand dollars, but it can't be a split purchase. There's like a five thousand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and that. that and it's been done that way. Yeah. Past, yep. So. And so, right, but yeah. No, I'm good. Yeah, it can't be a split purchase item. Where and that way, you come one month and do it another. Yeah. No, right. No. Yeah. So everything, like everything we do needs to go through the council. So I'm, I'm I, that was just a worst case scenario. So. Um, well, it's better to be safe than sorry. And well, and that's exact. And I will anything like that. Uh, I mean. I will make everybody aware of it. So. Where up we see you sporting a new hat or something. <laughs> Lord knows I need it. <laughs> okay. All right. Appreciate it, you all. Um, if anybody don't have anything else, uh, I uh, make, a, make motion. a motion that we adjourn. You can't. I'll make a motion. <laughs> well, I'll have somebody else make the motion. It's been a long day. I make a motion we adjourn. All right. <laughs> First, second. I'm learning these rules. As <laughs> you are. See, you're entertaining the motion. <laughs> right, right. There you go. All right.